I'm Lynn Unger, the CLF's Minister for Lifespan Learning. And when I think about home, I think about being an anomaly. I'm a Californian, and generally that's a very unrooted condition. People come here from other places for some variety of reasons. But I was actually born here. My parents were born here. My parents, in fact, grew up. My parents, I should say, live in still in the house that I grew up in. So I can actually go back and sleep in the room that was my room when I was a little kid. And that's special in its own way. And yet when I think about where I'm from and how people are shaped and, you know, there are Southern writers and there are people who identify as being Mainers and being from the suburbs on the eastern side of the hills across the bay from San Francisco is not in itself the same kind of defining, unique. It's a place. It's a nice house. Um, it's nice to be able to come home. But what I think of really as the grounding, sacred home spot is actually in the backyard of my parents' house. There's an enormous ancient huge oak tree that's certainly been there longer than there have been houses in that area maybe or maybe not longer than there have been people in the area and that, that's my home identity playing under that tree the tree house in that tree and so when i need a pretty much literally rooted roots going down sense of home. I think of that hillside and that tree and the taste of the miner's lettuce that's an edible weed that grew underneath it that we used to eat when we were camped out underneath it when I was kids. And so under that tree, I have my own particular sense of home. So Jordan, how about you? I understand about that desire for a sense of rootedness. I'm Jordan Nelson Long and I'm the CLF Fellow for Pastoral Care. I grew up in Wyoming and um, out on the prairie under just a, a black sky and meadowlarks would wake me up in the morning. It's the kind of thing that seems like you must be making it up, but that really was my childhood. And I never meant to leave. It has always seemed to me, as a creature of habit and someone who likes to stay rooted, that you would have to have a really good reason to move um, or, or you should stay where you are. And so I've been surprised as an adult to find myself living in the Kansas City area in the Missouri River Valley. And there have been questions for me about why and if I can live here, how do I know that I, I couldn't live anywhere and should I find the place that's just the one exactly right place for me? Um, as you get busy with life, eventually those questions have kind of faded until a few years ago when I started to hear a call to ministry. And then all of a sudden it felt again, just not as grounded. My home wasn't changing, but I was changing. And for a few months there, it was even hard to sleep. I would wake up at the, the faintest sound and I just couldn't get back to sleep. And it had gotten to the point where I just wasn't sure how to solve this problem. And then we had a family trip planned back home. And the first night that I spent in an uncomfortable bed, I have to tell you, you know, one of those ancient beds in your grandmother's basement, but I slept all the way through the night and woke up with such a feeling of wow. And I realized that what I needed was to connect again with a sense of rootedness and then was able to, to know that whatever changes were in store for me, that that, that home was something that I could carry inside me. What do you think, Mandy? Um, when I was when I was six years old, actually, um, my parents divorced, and I moved back and forth a lot. Um, being very liberal and open parents, they let me decide where to live, and I think that kind of scattered my sense of home all over the place. It wasn't the security of one place, and then later, um, when I married I married a military spouse and so I've moved lots of times and one time just for fun I counted up to see how many times I had moved and um, I've moved 39 times in my life since I was six years old and um, I think that and I'm a fellow for prison ministry and I think that's what connects me to thinking about how the prison 
the people in prison and the inmate members of the CLF have that moving around and in that sense of not having a permanent space. I can really connect to them and I can connect to the people who are writing to them because of that. But one thing that was constant, and this is a lot like Jordan's story, is my grandma, my grandparents were always there. They didn't move. And um, they were also beekeepers. So the house had this beautiful smell. It was just saturated with honey and, uh, and beeswax. And my husband and I bought our first house. It's, we've been married 20 years. We just bought our very first house. And, and I've had this ritual in my life where I burn a beeswax candle if I'm homesick. And so the very first thing I did in our new house was burn this beeswax candle. And it made me feel like this place was home. And, and that's how I really find home. Anytime that I'm homesick or missing my family, I'll, I'll burn a beeswax candle. And that smell close my eyes. And I can imagine my grandma's sunlit porch and the smell of honey and beeswax. So, E.B.? Yeah, um, I'm Elizabeth Buki, or EB, and um, I am one of the fellows for worship. And as I, we were thinking about, you know, where is a place that you most feel at home? And I remembered being a teenager, I guess maybe 12, um, and going to summer camp. And I, I was in a, a girls chorus, and we would have a summer camp retreat every, every year. And I loved it. And I, I remember very distinctly um, being getting on the bus to go home from summer camp and crying um, and starting to cry because I felt like I had this sense of I want to go home. Um, but what it meant wasn't I want to go back to my house. It was that I want to stay here at camp um, where I feel like I can be myself or I feel like I belong. Um, and you know, in a way that I didn't feel like I belonged at my middle school as a sort of awkward, um, awkward 12 year old. And so when I think about home, I think that's what I mean is uh, a sense of a sense of belonging and being able to be um, more fully who I am. And so when I try to find a sense of home, that's what I do. I reach out to someone who may, who helps me feel most like myself or <laughs> sorry I have a dog and she makes me feel at home but she also is very barky um so I'm going to call on uh Susan I've also moved around quite a lot and uh most recently um uh, my kids and my husband and I, we lived in the same house for five or six years and we decided to uh, get rid of most of our material life and move into an RV, a 30 foot, five foot trailer and um, live in Southern California for a year. And it was while we were down there that uh, I realized that what really makes our family have a sense of home is not necessarily where we are, but when we go places with a sense of adventure and we have these same prayers and rituals. And it occurred to me when we were in the RV saying these same prayers at bedtime and same prayers over our meals that we've said for many years, um, that it no matter where we are if we are saying those prayers and doing those rituals it feels like home Jorge hello my name is Jorge Spinell I am working with the Latino ministries and uh, for many years in my life I travel a lot so my house was in a bag and it was okay now you're going there and it's like Put your bag and go someplace and then someone will open the door and tell me this is your house so now when i look back at those those years and those experiences i realized that the places where i felt most at home were the places where i connected to people i remember people so sometimes the the ideas of the place are not so clear but i very clearly remember the connections and i clearly very clearly remember the way i felt with people and that was the feeling of home my family my family is pretty new 
So when I hear Susan's stories, is a is a the sense of home now is also being created by the common rituals, by the prayer before dinner, by lighting a candle, by those little things. And when the time comes, I'm thinking that those are going to be the things that I will be carrying with me that will make home wherever I am. So I think, Carrie, you go next. Thanks so much, Jorge. I'm Carrie Kapnick, and I am the fellow for family ministry and online learning here at CLF. And like Lynn, my parents still live in the house that they lived in when I was growing up, and those big trees do, do have, uh, I have quite a connection to those big trees in the backyard. And like EB, I had a fabulous summer camp experience when I was growing up, and was actually able to go back to that camp just a couple of years ago and walk the trails that I walked as a 13-year-old and remember how, how much at home I felt. But um, along the lines of some of the families, I, I, what, what really brought home home for me is when my children were little, their dad worked for an airline. And so anytime he got sent anywhere on business, we would tag along, we homeschooled. And so if there was a free hotel and a free flight, we were there. And I realized after one of those trips that home was kind of like, uh, we were kind of like a hermit crab that went from shell to shell to shell. And as long as we had our five spoons and our five forks and our five bowls and we could cook up some, some vegetable soup in a hot pot that uh, we, were, we could make home anywhere. And I think it served all of us pretty well because my, my sons are now all adults and, and they make their home in Siberia, in the Arctic, on stage, uh, you know, buying or moving into a brand new house in a brand new city with a brand new job. And as long as we are connected to those people that we love and new people that we love, when we make those connections, we bring home with us. And so and much like what, what Jorge said, you know, we have, our, we have our, our pieces of home and we bring them to where we are. And it's really about the connections that we have with the people that we love. That's all.